Welcome to the Legends and Masters Show, everyone. I'm your host, Tom Wheeler, and I'm very excited to introduce our two guests today. Uh, they are here to talk about their new movie, The Mongolian Connection, which releases August 18th, coming up, and uh, it'll be on iTunes uh, Store, Prime Video, and Google Play. We have a lot to talk about here. Welcome to writer and director, Drew Thomas, and lead actor, Kaivi Lyman. Hello, guys. How's it going? Hey, hey what's up, guys? Hey. How are you? <laughs> Yeah, Good. I like that opening yeah. song. It sounds like Fugazi. Yeah, you like that? Like that. I, I, I actually uh, wrote that. My I used to do uh, music professionally, and uh, I figure, uh, you know, don't have to worry about rights if you wrote it, right? So, uh, <laughs> that's true. That's so, cool. man, you guys, I got the, <clears throat> I got the pleasure of seeing this movie. Uh, a nice little screener that uh, actually Lloyd Bateman, the guy uh, who did second unit directing and also uh, stunt corning on this movie. This movie's so good, guys. Uh, super lucky. refreshing, uh, especially you know the being released right now is, is such a great thing because people are you know they don't have anything to watch, and uh, even better time to release this. Uh, what what inspired you guys uh, to uh, I'll lead us to, to Drew first? What inspired you to write this and kind of take this direction with this? You know, I I came at this one in a, in a different direction from how I would normally. Um, uh, begin a project, Tom. I am. Um, yeah. I, I do a little teaching down at a school in Texas from time to time. It's a cinema oh, television really? program. A producer I used to work with up here in, in California uh, moved down there and became the head at school and, and started hiring me. And I was down there uh, helping them um, on a couple projects. They were doing some music videos, other things. Ended up working very closely with. Um, a former student of theirs who, who became their staff cinematographer. Oh, okay. uh, his name is Yosua Fisher. Um, and uh, uh, when these students, when they move out to Los Angeles, I, when I can, I try to give them a leg up. I try to meet with them, maybe sure. help get them little jobs and anything I could do, camera operating, AC positions, whatever I can help them with, uh, just to help them get a foot in the door. Um, yeah. And so I, I did that with, with my friend Yosua. Um, and, uh, and uh, one day he called me and asked me if I wanted to have lunch. And, and I, I knew a little bit about Yosu's background from, from having worked with him on those projects in Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was telling me all about Mongolia. Now, Yosua is, uh, is German, now German American, but spent, uh, well, really grew up in Mongolia. His, his parents, uh, up and moved him and the family in, I think, 1991, um, down to Mongolia uh, as, as missionaries, actually. No big deal, right? <laughs> yeah, NBD, they had to bring their own toilet paper. That was, wow. yeah. that was the situation. Yeah, you, you know, thought toilet paper was a problem now. Yeah, right, I mean, right there. Yes, was yeah, well, Kaivi, wow. do you remember what the toilet paper was like in, in Mongolia? Um, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, imagine the shoes on that. It was of sandpaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> toughen Correct. you up, toughen they're you up. Very yeah, tough. yeah. yeah, they're like you, Hollywood sissies. We're gonna make men out of you. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, Mongolia, of course, was a Soviet protectorate for decades, um, and then when the Soviet Union collapsed, it was flung into um, into sort of free market oh. democracy, roughly. Um, yeah. And uh, he was telling me about this, and he said, you know, they they have a, a fledgling film industry there and they're making films at quite low budgets with really good production values. They've got a lot of good professionals there and they're able to turn these around um, in country for a profit often. Wow. Uh, and naturally under the circumstances, um, you know, I, I had recently finished, fairly recently finished my previous movie. Um, I said, do I want to do one? I said, let's, let's make this happen. And he said, really, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And, so he sent um, he sent my previous movie um, channeling along to uh, our connections in, in Mongolia, and um, and it just started there. So l long answer to a short question, but there you have it. That, man, that's that's so interesting. And and uh, Kaidi, how did you uh, get involved in in this project? This is actually, I mean, Drew, chime in whenever you want. But this is, I love this story. This is probably one of my favorite oh, things. Is that. Uh, I believe uh, uh, you worked with Gabe, right, Drew? That's how you knew Copeland? Yes, correct. Correct. So, so Drew 
apparently – what Drew, why don't you start with the – I guess you had an sure. actor that dropped I, – I wasn't even supposed to be in the film. Oh, wow, originally. really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is, it is, the, it is the, the, the greatest example of kismet maybe in my professional life, Tom. Um, it is literally the universe bringing, <laughs> bringing people together because now Amazing. that Drew is in my life, I will I, – like I, I tell him every time I talk to him, I cannot wait to work with him. My whole oh, awesome. representation team knows his name by heart because I just – does Drew any have anything? Can Get some – Drew a job. Yeah. So I can <laughs> – um, yeah, do that. Do yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but so I so, you know, I guess one thing led to another, and uh, Drew was without. Drew, you tell this. Tell this part. This is more yeah, uh, yeah, on you. Okay, I'll try to do it with brevity, unlike my unlike my habit. Um, so uh, Tom, we we had an actor who will remain unnamed who okay. had, had he had uh, wanted to be the lead in in channeling. And I didn't think he was exactly the right fit, but I, I did want to work with him. Um, I was a big fan of some of his previous work. And so when, when this film started to come together, I reached out to him, sent him the script, um, sent him the revised script. And after some jockeying back and forth, he was going to do it. Um, he agreed on, you know, on all the terms and so on. Um, off to but, a good start, right? Yeah, it, was, it was off to a good start. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, yeah. Unfortunately, it it stopped at after that start. Um, oh, it, the closer we got, the more cagey he got, and um, he was complaining about stuff going on with his family and some legal trouble, and he might need to move out of the city. And you know, we had, we had gotten a schedule to him um, probably a month, month and a half prior to this. Oh, that's uh, a schedule I mean, point. A fair, a fairly detailed schedule. Wow. And um, it was now, it was a Sunday afternoon, and I was, for the record, flying to Mongolia on Wednesday okay. for the last four Sorry. weeks of, of pre-production, scouting, um, you know, tweaks, everything else going into production. So I, I was leaving in a few days. This was like about three or four in the afternoon on a Sunday. And I called him up just to, I mean, I think my spidey sense was going on, but just to make sure we were copacetic. Right. And um, uh, he said he absolutely couldn't, he said he couldn't imagine coming to Mongolia at the time we had scheduled him to come to Mongolia and oh. bought his flights and so on. He couldn't imagine it. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know who it is. And this is funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, yeah, we don't have to say who it is, but it sounds like, you know, especially on your end, like we're in, we're, we're, we're going, and you have to, that to, to uh, juggle. Well, you know, I mean, Tom, what I didn't want to do is be running casting sessions for my lead role <laughs> from the other side of the planet, which, by the way, is a 14-hour time difference. No, 15-hour time difference. So um, I was desperate and upset. <laughs> and I did something that I, while I was – literally while I was doing it, I was like, this is a waste of time. I put out a post on Facebook Monday morning, early, early oh, Monday really? morning. <laughs> Looking for that. <laughs> now, I, the, the, this is funny because I, this is, this is more so back to how just the universe working in mysterious yeah. ways is I don't have a Facebook. So if anyone Ooh. ever contacts you from Facebook <laughs> and says it's me, it's not. Um, <laughs> but a mutual friend of ours uh, but Drew, you you continue because you tell it. So okay, well, I, I don't want to dominate here, but 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 real quick. So I put out this post, assuming it was a total waste of time. I also yeah. called our casting director, you know, with a nine one. Well, I texted him with a nine one one text. He was on another show, um, oh, and uh, I put out this post, and of course, I got the phone book. You know, it it didn't seem to matter that I put out I needed a man between these ages because I was getting all genders, all, all types, everything. And I was practically ready to delete the post and, and, and just sort of, I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And then I got a private message. I got a DM from my friend Gabe Copeland. Um, and, uh, and he said, you have got to talk to my friend Evie. And I said, oh, yeah. And he, and he sent me a, a, just a whole bunch of pictures and credits and everything else. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I was like... And, and I should mention that the guy that, that had the role until he didn't um, was not actually 
I mean, not even in the same league as far as fitting this role. I had to rewrite the role from scratch oh. when, when, I, when I booked this previous actor. Oh, really? And what, what, what oh. Evie's presence allowed me to do is restore the character to whom the character was supposed oh, to be. That's awesome, man. And of course, Kiwi brought a ton to the character as well. But you know, this was now uh, Kiwi. I mean, uh, maybe you remember the time, but this is probably around nine in the morning on a Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Then <laughs> Kiwi read the script, read it again, and that afternoon we were doing lens tests. We shot anamorphic, and we were doing lens tests at Keslo okay. Camera. Um, me and my camera operator, Kiwi came to the lens test, and that yeah, was it. I, I mean, know. you know. Yeah. Uh, other than the details, it was it was a booking. So I basically I got a text from our buddy Gabe, and says, "Hey, uh, my friend's looking for a lead in a film that shoots in Mongolia. Are you interested?" I was like, "Well, you know, if he's a friend of yours, well, send me the script." And I yeah. think I got about I don't know if I've ever tro told Drew this, but I think I got about ten or fifteen pages. I think I read the opening scene, which I'm not even in. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> I, I text Gabe back and be like, I, "I'm not done with the script." But I'm very interested. Give Drew my number. Amazing. Um, wow. And then I, I finished it and then reread it right away. And then, yeah. And then me and Drew met and it was love at first sight. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, he put, me in some good, he put me in some good lighting and, and it was yeah. like, this will do. And um, that's an amazing rest. story, guys. Just, yeah. you know, just the onset of that. And I, I was going to ask the question, you know, okay, if you like when you first read the, the script, your thoughts, but it's something, yeah, like, yeah, just that opening segment that that really yeah. sold and, and by the way this movie it hits you right off the bat and i just the way um you know drew your storytelling is excellent in this uh it is Bless very you, thank you. i i don't want to overuse the word refreshing but that's I, it really felt like that especially like it, the story uh was layered so well you know, whether you mix drama with action with beats of comedy uh i don't want to give anything too much away but yeah all I gotta say is uh, things with the car uh, were, were pretty funny little nods throughout the movie, yeah. um, but, but that's it, that's but, an atonement to Drew's style and writing, which yes, it's, and to use your word, and comic timing. That, well, very refreshing to me as an actor is that you know we have this dramatic action piece, but Drew writes such brilliant situational comedy totally. that yeah. just comes out as not shtick, but just the exactly. nature of the character yeah and it just felt so organic and when we had a little screening for this um almost a year ago to like a packed house and to see people laughing the whole room laughing out loud i was like yeah oh, God, this is this is what we this this is why we did it this is awesome well you guys are being really generous thank you very much and and i mean again you know i i can't overstate um, whether it's, you know, divine fiat, as we say in the film, or, or kismet or what, but I, I couldn't have been, uh, I couldn't have been more fortunate, Tom, to, than to get Kiwi, because Kiwi's comic chops are extremely good, and I didn't have to direct him as to how to be this, this character. He simply, I mean, it is impossible for me to imagine somebody else as Wade Dalton, um, which, by yeah. the way, the name Dalton, taken from Westerns, of course, uh, we, we copyrighted that one first, um, Mr. Tarantino. <laughs> there you go. Like another little bit. When, when I left that screening, I had you know a group of my little entourage of friends that came, and they're like, uh, we prefer to hang out with Wade Dalton. We like him way more than you. <laughs> so, oh, no. That's I'm forever... Me as Kaivi is is ruined, but Wade's cool guy. Uh, yeah, just everybody's just calling Wade from now on. There. Yeah, there you go. I'll answer to that. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, everything's you know, like I said, with if there's action, sometimes it just gets like just too punchy. There's no like real storytelling in it uh, in in some movies, or even uh, or it's distracting to a point, or even the comedy, like we're mentioning. And this was it just really pushes the story so well. I I loved it. I'm super excited for everybody to see this. Uh, not even, I wasn't even honest. <laughs> um, now, the other thing is, um, I guess you kind of answered this a little earlier, Drew. What made you choose uh, Mongolia? Because what an interesting uh, dynamic, dynamic place to go. Not to mention, man, you just point the camera anywhere there, right? And you just got, you got like a, a just amazing scenery. Yeah. Oh, wow. And culture, like super yeah. rich uh, culture. What was your experience? Uh, I'll start. Uh, with Drew and then okay, you can kick in too, like yeah. just filming there and, and setting things up in Mongolia. 
I mean, you know, it, Mongolia is absolutely amazing. Um, it's an absolutely unbelievable country to visit. Um, and the people there, despite the climate, which it's, it's uh, Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia, is the coldest capital in the world. Um, our, our, our Mongolian lead, Amra, is, um, yeah. is fond of posting side by side weather reports from Antarctica and Ulaanbaatar <laughs> when Ulaanbaatar is colder. Um, it's the coldest weather I've ever experienced was yes, wow. those final days of pre-production. Um, but it's an absolutely amazing place. And, and I, I feel like um, myself and, and the rest of the foreign cast and crew, now most of our crew was local, um, of course, but, uh, but we, you know, we of course had Kiwi and we, we, um, we had uh, Lloyd and, and Tolga and um, our, our camera operator, George, and of course our cinematographer, Yosua, who basically is Mongolian. Um, but but the whole foreign like scene me. was uh, was was absolutely smitten with with Mongolia. It, it's wow. an it's an amazing place. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. It's it's magical. I I I can't get back there quick enough to shoot another film or wow. just be there. I mean it. It, it I I love it too because it's it's also a a, a breath of fresh air because how you don't see very many action films that have exactly. English in them coming out of Mongolia. And, oh, you know, sure. if I may be so bold to say at the quality of what, you know, our film has been received at. And yes. uh, so to kind of showcase that side of the world, um, you know, ho hopefully there'll be some more work heading that way. And it's, I, it, I really it's, hope so. I mean, if you think about it, like, anything coverage of Mongolia at all is it's all like beautiful just Genghis Genghis Khan time. Yes. And I yes. love that like the modernization of this. You know, uh, a friend of mine uh named Lavelle Marshall, uh it, he even says, you know, just looking up the sky seems just bigger there because it's just rolling hills. Yes. What was that for you like just looking for sites to to shoot? Well uh so we we went out uh, myself and Yozua we flew to Mongolia mm -hmm. in the spring of 2017. And it was, it was on its face sort of, it was really a development trip. We were calling it location scouting. At that point, we didn't have a script. We had, a, we had an outline, oh. um, which by the way, totally changed while we were there. Um, but uh, but w with, with Amra, with our, our Mongolian lead actor, and um, as well as one of the supporting actors, um, Garma, uh, who plays, well, I don't want to say, he's, well, he's one of the police officers. He's the partner to Amra early in the film. Right. Um, and uh, uh, we just headed out into the countryside. And it's, you know, Mongolia, people may not know, is, is, is one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world. There's all of about 3 million people in Mongolia, and half of them live in the capital city of Ulaanbaatar. So we drove out um, into the countryside. And, you know, it's, it's like you say, Tom, it's like, you know, uh, turn one direction and you've got an amazing vista, turn another direction, You've got some, you know, rotting Soviet structure, uh, and then right. turn again, and there is a, a road to a village. Um, you know, it's really, really fascinating looking, and it's just it's there's so much character. It's so different. Um, it's true Central Asian uh, uh, culture and topography, and you know, it it it, it has a sense of, of Russia and the stands. It's of course you know right there close to Kazakhstan. Um, yes. Yes, where where some of our our um, our team came from and two of our lead actors, right? Um, yes. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's just it's just a wonderful place to shoot. Um, the roads are tough, uh, insofar as there are roads. Um, there's sort of <laughs> yeah. one main road that goes straight out that, that we took all the way to Dahan. But um, you know, my I, I hadn't been in country for more than twenty four hours, I think. Yeah, 24 hours when we were in a, a Toyota Land Cruiser heading out to the countryside, which is everywhere basically, um, other than villages yeah. and a couple cities, and um, and then spent that night uh, in a in a semi legal gold mine. The the picture of the gear I sent you, Tom, that you just showed is uh, yeah. we, we spent the night in that in that yurt oh, in that awesome. gear, um, which is another story that I won't belabor you with, but. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it's it's a, it's an amazing place to shoot. Rolling hills, wild horses. Um, it's incredibly dramatic, incredibly cold. At times, very harsh, but just 
just jaw dropping. Yeah. Just, just overall. Yeah, yeah. That's unbelievable. And yeah, the experience of that, it really adds, it really does add, you know, on location adds to the movie so much and there is so much, uh, I don't know, enriches it a lot more by being a part of that and, and, and including that dynamic of, you know, it's Mongolia. That's not like an average stat, you know, most people would, you know, probably go to some more of the commonality things in the past. So that's another thing I applaud you for. Cause I thought it was a, a part of the world. Uh, it's just not really tapped into man. You know, you know, the, yeah. the pop culture, social media scene uh, it's excellent. Now uh, just filming the, this uh, looked like it was a blast to do. I, I, and, and in many cases, I just want to get to this picture here. It looks like you had some long hours as, <laughs> as, <laughs> as well. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's a story. Uh, Cause we all, we all love coffee to this picture. Right? You sent me <laughs> brush my teeth with coffee. Right. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, you know, I, right now I'm kicking myself. Um, Tom, because uh, uh, I, I really should, <laughs> I really should have sent you pictures of Kaivi's first experiences with our our local makeup team. Uh oh, <laughs> uh, this story here. Yeah, uh, this uh, we didn't want to come. We didn't want to come back. Uh, really? Kaivi, would, would you please uh, fill him in on, on yeah, what? Yeah. So I, I, yeah. So apparently, in um. And I want to apologize to any makeup artists listening, but this this is this is true. In Mongolia, in their film industry, uh, the makeup team, if you sit down in a chair, will start massaging you. And at first, You're pampered. It, wow. And not and not but my, and not by one person. It's. I mean, I yeah. I wish we 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 shared that photo with you, but there's a photo of me with someone. I believe there's one. <laughs> There was at least five people all over me, <laughs> wow. giving me a very professional nothing, yeah. you know. And and uh, uh, it was very uncomfortable at first. So I'm just like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. And then within like ten minutes, you're like, yep, I'm, I need a Bring massage. Right? <laughs> and so that's it's, awesome. it's uh, I mean, that's just you know, a, it's a different culture, but it's and it's phenomenal someone brings you water and you snack and you're getting massaged and they're fixing your hair and makeup and they're like okay time to come back to set and i'm like i'm not ready you're right <laughs> <laughs> well i hear like as a people they're like very uh Wonderful. welcoming very amazing. welcoming people amazing oh, that's food that's too very true food. Oh. i was going to ask you how how's the food cuz it looks incredible really like delicious and hearty I mean, you got to be a carnivore to make it out there i think that was that's when i kind of had some some ideas of myself of what drew had been going through with his previous lead when he asked me uh oh. he's like kv you're not a vegetarian by any chance are you i was like no what are you talking about he's like oh okay i <laughs> just wanted to make sure um but yeah it would be like one of those things where it's like we'd be filming and there's a cow there and they're like you see that cow and you're like yeah i see that cow and they're like well that's dinner I'm like wow that's super <laughs> organic um I think we had a lamb. What was it? A lamb? Dinner it was bacon? a lamb. lamb, right? Lamb. That's right. Lamb. Yeah. Oh, and mm -hmm. they cook it in that hot stone pot with just vegetables and potatoes. It, Unbelievable. It was, it's a very I love it. experience. It sounds awesome at making it. Oh. Now, uh, uh, another question for you, Drew, is um, you know for the process of writing, you know there is a lot of uh, translating that needs to be done. Mongolian. Mm. Uh, I believe some was uh, Kazakh as well, like or, or little Russian kind Russian, of words. Yeah. Um, so what? Uh, how, what's that like for you as a writer? Are you just kind of like, all right, this is what I want them to say, and you work hand-in-hand -hand with translators at that point, or what was your kind of forethought with it? You know, it's a really good question. Um, and going into this, the, the closer we got, and as we as we cast people, um, you know, and we quite strategically wanted at least one lead from Kazakhstan. Um, we ended up getting Sandra Armadi, who um, – he in Kazakhstan is, a, is an absolute superstar um, as Amra is in, in Mongolia. And, and it, it sounds like a punchline. It sounds like, you know, we're big in Japan, but um, spinal tap. But the truth is, 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 is once you're there, you travel anywhere with these people and people are stopping their cars and getting out and asking for photos. Um, and, uh, but um, so as soon as it was clear that, that, that we were going to be working in multiple languages, I really decided that, that it was a situation to turn a disadvantage into an advantage and to make oh. 
language and misunderstanding part of the story. Um, yes, yes. And and you know, I'll, I'll let this character, this 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 character who's a fugitive and and, and really a, a criminal, but but is allowed maybe a maybe a, a glimpse of redemption. Um, our antihero, uh, he doesn't let on till halfway through the film that that uh, that he understands and speaks perfect English. Um, yes. Which allows us to have a moment where our, our protagonist, our American protagonist, gets a little bit. Uh, I, you know, I kind of your reaction was priceless. <laughs> yeah, handsome American protagonist. The handsome, the stu- the very smoldering. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, th- there's there's a scene in the film where where our Kazakh <laughs> lead Sandra Armadi uh, says something in Mongolian um, to a to a couple other characters that he's trying to insult, and and what he says is so vile and so dirty. Um, that that the the Mongolians, a lot of them had to walk off set because they couldn't stop from laughing. It's very unusual. They they, they joke that they've only got two two curse words in in Mongolian. One is pista, which I won't tell you what that means. The other is Prius, because there's too many Priuses there. Um, So, but uh, but yeah, you know, Tom, I just had to sort of make language part of it and and ended up having a lot of fun with it. Including writing just r- language far more foul than than a Mongolian would comfortably say, yeah, yeah. and used and, and weaponized that language against a couple bad guys. So yeah, um, yeah, that that was, that was excellent. That's a good way to word it too. Weaponize it because uh, mm-hmm. it was great. Yeah, and kind of your reaction in that scene was hilarious. I, oh yeah, yeah. Was, that, yeah. that was the other great thing. Like you know, there's so many <laughs> great beats in this movie and and the story arc as a whole. But also even the sub story between characters, um, you know, like like Kaivi, I'll have you go into this now for uh, your character, uh, Wade Dalton. Um, you know, in in a little brief description, uh, if you could describe him for us, because I mean, this guy, he's got it seems like he's got some demons to him as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's um, uh, <laughs> yeah, Wade's a Wade's a special guy. You know, in a nutshell, he's a FBI agent with a not very good at home relationship and maybe a little pill popping problem, but, yeah. uh, you know, he, he manages to come out on top, uh, most of the time, but not without, you know, getting roughed up. You know, he's a real, he's a real guy. He's not Jason Bourne. He doesn't just kill everybody without getting touched. Like he's a, right. he's a normal dude with, with major flaws, but, at, at the bottom of it, he's got a good heart, and he knows he knows right from wrong, and he stands yeah. up for what's right. And that's you know that that's what really drew me to. I'm getting goosebumps talking about <laughs> a character I played. Yeah. Um, uh, that's what really drew me to playing him is I had never played anything like that, and you know, um, and I can't wait for the Mongolian connection too, Drew. Hey, so I hey, can play him go. again <laughs> from your mouth to God's ears. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> well, that was great because yeah, what you just described there exactly, it, it, guys. Uh, it, it that itself gave he was so much more re- relatable, so much more human. Or it, actually, that gave the it so much more weight. And yeah. now, when you, when you start like connecting the, the other characters, uh, uh, Gonsrig or Gans, yeah. Gonsrig, yeah. like f- f- another phenomenal actor in a great oh, yeah. performance. I mean, like just the weight, like and even in his eyes, uh, the way he, he communicates. But when you guys first two on scene, not a huge scene in the dialogue together, but man, you like, oh man, this is getting a whole no. You feel everything's getting ready to go to a new gear. Yeah, it's revving yeah. up. And I mean, he's uh, yeah. he's he, what he's an incredible man and and just and a and a powerhouse yeah. actor. And Drew's spot on. Like we would go out and be stopped in the street. For autographs and he knows he runs that town like that yeah. you know he is the biggest actor in mongolia you know i don't know what the equivalent of out here he would be i don't i don't know who but he's, so he's large happening <clears throat> wow. yeah that's pretty amazing and and, yeah. and and drew drew how did you uh first encounter him like you're meeting mm. him so he actually um he's also one of the producers on the film and and what happened was in the very early days when when this film was was a a, a seeming impossibility. Um, uh, I, I was watching videos that that Yozua, again my cinematographer, also Yozua was one of the producers on the film. Uh, there's four of us, uh, 
Yozul would send me um, uh, videos of trailers of other films that Amr had been in. And I kept saying, you know, in the very early days, I, I didn't even know who Yozul was talking to in Mongolia and who he was going to be meeting with. We eventually had a meeting on Halloween. Um, I think it was 20, Halloween 2016. We met uh, our first real meeting about the film. Um, uh, and then we shot, of course, in 2018 uh, and finished in 2019. But um, uh, I would watch these trailers, not really even knowing who Yosu was going to connect me with. And I couldn't not stop the video. It was a trailer for a movie called um, uh, Trapped Abroad. And I couldn't, I couldn't not stop the trailer and, and say to him, okay, who's this guy? And Yosu says, that's, that's our guy. That's, that's the guy we're talking to. Awesome. He, um, he absolutely, and, and this is true of all my, uh, my three leads. I mean, I, and, and actually at least one of our villains, I, I couldn't have been luckier than with this cast, Tom. Uh, they yeah, lose charisma. It's, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Phenomenal cast. I was going to go in, in, in each uh, person. I mean, Sanjar, uh, his story arc is super interesting. And you know, at first you're like, oh, you know, he's like a bad guy or something. And then you really see that, that arc with uh, him and the character, uh, Kulan. Uh, yeah. Which uh, how do you, again? How do you pronounce uh, her, her name? I don't, I don't want to butcher it. Uh, no problem. And and frankly, um, I, I <laughs> often do butcher these names, so um, understandable. Um, her name is Tetseg um, Biamba. Man, and like, she also she was um, in a very big international film um, shot in Mongolia when she was a bit younger. Um, I, I can't I can't remember the name off the top of my head, so I'll get that to you, Tom. Um, yeah. But again, you know, we we looked at a lot of actors uh, for that role. It's an incredibly important role. And we didn't, we didn't want, we didn't want a shrinking violet. We didn't want a delicate flower. I didn't want to go down that right. road. You know, you know, one of the reasons that, that Evie and, and um, is so perfect for Wade and Wade, I, I believe is the right character for the story is, um, I was from the very early earliest days of talking about doing this film. The, the thing that I most did not want to do was write a, write a white savior script. The last thing I wanted oh, to do yeah. Is, yeah. is write about a character who goes to Mongolia and saves people. Um, great, great point. Cause you, you don't, like I said, uh, that's my kind of theme of this. It, it, it is so refreshing on many levels and in, in, in that in particular as well. I'm glad you touched point on that for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I just, you know, that's just something I, I just was not willing to do. And and frankly, those characters are boring anyways. It's so much more interesting to write a character like Wade Dalton, who who is complex and fallible and, and all yeah. kinds of funny stuff happens to. Um, but you always believe in the guy, and I, and I hope always identify with him. I, I should mention that that a lot of the stupid stuff that, that happens to Wade happened to me on, on location scouting. So um, <laughs> you write what you know. Something where Wade would always bump his head. The, the doors to the yurts there, the gares, are four feet. And they're made of very sharp wood. Uh, and oh, I yeah. came back with so many injuries on my head. <laughs> I, I, I should mention, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tall. I'm about six and a half feet tall. And, and I could not, you're, you're not supposed to step on the threshold of the gare. You're supposed to step over the threshold, which means nice. you have to do this sort of flying leap slash controlled <laughs> fall to get out of the gear oh, if man. you fall. And so, um, so we actually cut out, and we, just for time's sake, we cut out a scene where, where Wade walks out of a gear and smashes his head in, <laughs> into the top of the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a, it's a stretch for me because Drew is a tall drink of water. What, yeah. Say hi. Oh, hi. How's it going? Hi. There we go. Hey, good looking. <laughs> <laughs> we get guest appearances on the show. That's a guest appearance. Yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah, Wade. Yeah. That's Wade Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's work. <laughs> yeah, that that yeah, it's it's so unbelievable. Yeah, going into that, and I, I, you could I think that translates quite a bit. Um, you know, instead of you know, oh you know, like God. Ivy, instead of like just reading the cold, being able to, where do I relate with this guy? I mean, just I, mm -hmm. even on an acting level. We don't relate with this guy and interacting. We talked a little bit before uh, with the other character, but you know, with the character Shriek, uh, played by Sinjar, um, you know, what was your experience like working with him? Because again, the chemistry there, uh, 
it really fed off each other very, very well. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about uh, these location shoots, too, is you're – I don't want to use the word force, but you're thrown into becoming a family very quickly. So we would have all our meals together and we would go home together. We would go to work together. We would text each other on days off. We would go out, hang out. So it, it was a brotherhood right, right away. And, and that I think because him and I got, I mean, I, we, everyone got along. There wasn't a bad egg on the whole project, you know, and, 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 you know, it's inevitable sometimes in this industry, you'll run into that. I've been fortunate enough in my career not to. Um, but Sandra and I, we just, I mean, we're brothers. And then it just wow. becomes so much more easier to play off of that on camera. And it's, it's just an effortless, effortless chemistry, if you will. Interesting. It, re it really comes off. And, um, yeah. and, you know, for every movie you need a, uh, I, 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 oh, he's a definitely a good bad guy, but he's you know he's a loyal good bad guy. Yeah, and that's the, the right here. Oh, he's fantastic. <laughs> and Drew, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was told he he was a he's a he's a stunt guy. Jean Dos is first and foremost a stunt guy, yeah. and specializing in horses. Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah, but wow, he really? his acting blew me away. I was like, I think you need to be acting a whole lot more than be doing stunts, man. It's easier on the body. Yeah, John okay. is also very, very um, well known in Kazakhstan. So I yeah, think he's it, it, amazing. Yeah, it is Sandrar and Zandos are like the tops over there, the guys. Wow. Yeah, Zandos yeah, is um is he's practic he and Sanjar are practically brothers, and I owe it to Sanjar because again we had somebody else lined up for that role, lost them. I got on instant messaging with Sanjar and, and he and I were just chatting about script and other things. And he said, you've got to talk to my brother, Jandos. You've got to. And I went to Jandos' Instagram, which um, anybody watching this should look up. Uh, well, look up all the actors' Instagrams, but, but go to Jandos' Instagram and I think you'll see instantly why we picked him for this role. Um, yeah. The yeah. very bad, but very charismatic bad guy. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and also I think plays it with with a certain, uh, a certain suaveness. Yeah. In, in, in yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. He's, great. He's doing bad guys stuff for sure. Like definitely hardcore bad guy <laughs> or even like the, the enforcer side of to the bad guy. But yeah, you got that. It's interesting. It was like um, that sense of loyalty he had, like he was tied in and, or even how he was, you know, towards the end of the movie, uh, you know, his kind of showdown. With the character Sarik, um, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. To everybody that watches this definitely needs to watch watch it because there's so many uh, amazing layers to it. And I, it, from from the beginning to the end, you're just totally engaged in the story and invest investing and reinvesting in other characters that come along. Uh, we talked about her a little earlier, but like this mm -hmm. was a, a a nice surprise. Like instead of just introducing a character and okay, we got a female role. Like, yeah, you're right. This really, like, a lot was hinging off the, her character in particular mm -hmm. uh, for this movie. You know, what kind of, like, in um, writing-wise inspired you to kind of lead lead that direction? You know, um, as, I, as I mentioned, Tom, when, when we scouted and, and did our development trip in 2017, um, I, I, I went into, well, we arrived in the morning um, in Mongolia and went into that evening uh, with a with an outline of what I thought the story was going to be, and in my my first evening, first dinner with with Amra, it completely changed, and I was up and jet lagged my first night in country. Um, I was up at three or four in the morning, absolutely unable to sleep, and um, and rewrote the uh, the the entire outline, and then put it on index cards, and and um, and it became what it was, and then I repitched it to Amra as we rode through the countryside, looking looking at locations. Now, I should mention that, and I don't think this is spoiling anything. Um, the story itself is intentionally quite simple. I, I based it on American yeah. westerns. Um, okay. uh, I, I watched a whole bunch of westerns at that time, as well as a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of sort of very early like Buster Keaton slapstick. Um, okay. Yeah. I watched all of that stuff uh, very, very early on in the development stage. And, and actually, um, when Yozu and I went on the development trip, 
we had DVDs of multiple um, uh, Westerns of uh, Japanese film noir, as well as Buster Keaton films. And we would watch these things and talk about it and, and the script and story developed from there. But basically what, what I decided to do um, was to, to hang, um, I, I hope, interesting and rich characters and interesting and rich moments on a very simple uh, story. That was the goal. I love that. You know, I mean, you know, more of my like art, art side. I, I was a professional musician. Uh, I travel around playing guitar and fun stuff like that. Um, but like, you know, that side of things, it, it, you do feel that kind of, you know, like I always like to tell people when you play live, you get this like instant feedback or, you know, you could tell like, hey, you know, that song's working or not working. But, you know, as you're kind of piecing this together, you know, how things literally just, uh, coalesce and, and play off each other as you're going through with, with this story. Uh, everything just, like I said, everything gelled so well together. Another thing I really wanted to commend you for um, uh, you and the, the cinematographer, um, the cinematography, the way this movie is shot is uh, so clever. And again, it has these unique beats in it, uh, whether it's like uh, leaving the gun on and get this view from the gun and it, there, there's very interesting points of that. How much of that was uh, just the storytelling aspect? Like you said, that what inspired you writing the story and how much of that was just kind of like being on set with the cinematography? And That's a really good question. And, and I should, it, it, it's, it's wild. I'm sure Kiivi will back me up on this. Uh, our, our cinematographer, Yozua Fisher, um, I think this is painful. I think he was 26 when we shot the movie. <laughs> Oh, really? um, wow. He's really, really young. He might have been 27. Um, really young guy, just a, just a real natural talent at cinematography. And he and I, um, for the, the month or so of pre-production we had in country in 2018, every morning we would go to, um, to a, a, a coffee shop that was near our hotel. And, um, and we would order way too much coffee and way too many pastries. <laughs> and sit there with a sketch pad and draw shots. And we went scene by scene. We never finished the whole film. We did make certain decisions on set. Um, there's one scene in particular uh, involving Hulan um, that, that I ostensibly wrote the scene in the van on the way to, to location. Oh, really? Um, yeah, just because due to happenstance, things changing, schedules changing and stuff, I needed to, I needed to figure out how to handle a certain beat and, and, and that's happened. Um, I want to mention, Tom, that that I'm a I'm a big fan of Brian De Palma. Um, okay. Another film that we watched a lot, um, and we watched with the Mongolians actually, is um, is the the uh, the Brian De Palma David Mamet film, um, uh, The Untouchables. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Brian De Palma. I I feel like um, we also, by the way, watched Heat by Michael Mann um, with with our Mongolian team. Uh, in production, um, uh, I see the, the beat. yeah, the influence. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you know, we didn't have the anywhere near the resources of of, of either of the films. Not even we probably didn't even have their catering budget. But, yeah. um, but you know, uh, Brian De Palma, I think is is doesn't get quite the credit he's due um, for his vi visual storytelling chops and the way he builds a scene and builds tension in a scene. So. Um, I'm a big fan of his, and I, I think I think other fans of his who watch the movie will probably see his influence on on the shot uh, on the shot structure for sure. Yeah. For sure, that, that's awesome. I want to turn this next one to uh, Kaivi because I, I know Drew being part of it, you know, like every nook and cranny of this, uh, it, it's a little harder to step outside of it. So Kaivi, like when you see like uh, the screening of this, you know, for the mm -hmm. first time, the whole deal, yeah. Uh, you know, you did mention a little earlier uh, when people, you know, the funny parts, you hear people laughing. What was that like for you? Just seeing that finished product, you know what I mean? Like, you oh. put all this into it, and and I'll post some uh, pictures in as we kind of go through. Uh, take it away. Yeah, so when I saw it, was the first time I saw oh, That was a fun day. Um, was the first time I saw it. Uh, so, I was watching as a fan, too. I mean, wow. granted, I'd have to see my large face all the time, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I was just, I was blown away because I knew everything that was happening. And I was like, that's wow. That this look how 
amazing it, it came out and I knew we were making something special, but to see it on the big screen and to see it with a, you know, a packed house and their reactions, it's just, you know, it's like we yeah. put in, we put in a lot of long hours and we put in a lot of hard days and everyone put, you know, blood, sweat and tears into this and, and to see it pay off like that, it, it was so rewarding. I mean, I did this, oh I've said this before, God. this has been my most favorite project I've ever done, you know, and this is Amazing. my most favorite character. Amazing. And this, yeah. per, this is the part where we get uh, uh, se sentimental a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, Kaivi, while, while we got Drew on the spot here, uh, what was your favorite part about working with Drew? Oh, um, what, if to, what, to narrow it down to just a few? I mean, everything, everything. about working with Drew is wonderful. Um, Amazing. Drew's attention to detail. Uh, this is what I like about Drew is – in, in, in my career, you encounter uh, directors that are very technical oriented, like they mm -hmm. understand the camera and stuff, but maybe not so much how to talk to talent and then vice oh, versa. It's very much about the talent. The director knows how to talk about the talent, but they're just kind of just leaving the shots up to their DP and don't have any sense of, of yes. uh, yeah. you know, that mechanism. Drew is a divine creation between the two because he could move effortlessly between that and and he he's open for collaboration which is it's it's so important again i go back to calling movie yeah. making business a family making business and with you know today's Good state point. i hope it can still you know survive uh uh you know the conditions in which we're living in and still be a family business but um uh that was one of the most attractive things that i took away from working with drew is um is that power? Is that is that? It's, it's truly a gift that I don't think it can be taught. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. And also, he's easy on the eyes. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you you see it in the the product of the film. You see it. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, yeah. actors bring so much to the table, but so much is about the, you yeah. know, the storytelling and in the uh, yeah. And there was no sense of like I'm doing even this behind scenes, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. And and Drew would work all the time, like when we were out maybe exploring Mongolia on a day off, Drew would kindly be like, no, nope, guys, I'm working. Like Drew, Drew didn't stop working. Like he was, he, he put in everything to this film and you see that in. I the missed Evie's first snowball fight, I, that, which was yes. like, oh, yeah, night night from Hawaii. Yeah. there My, was a uh, huge cast and crew yeah. snowball fight outside our hotel. I was upstairs writing. I'm getting texts <laughs> of videos and, uh yeah, I made I made my first snow angels and had my first snowball fight in wow. Mongolia. Wow! In my, yeah. who can say that? I mean, <laughs> it's mine. <clears throat> That's lovely. Yeah. And, and for those of you who don't know, he, he's from Hawaii. So I am from Hawaii. Yeah, not a, not a lot of snow there. Yeah, and I live in Southern California, so not a lot of snow here either. At least yeah. by the beach. Yeah. You know, and I, I'll turn this to Drew now. Like, um, you know, the, you got a whole cat, amazing cast. I to me. I always thought that might be the hardest part, especially being the writer too, uh, of like picking, there's so many people to audition for different things. And I was going to ask a question that you already answered, which was what was the most difficult thing about making this film? I'd say you, you addressed that in the beginning of this interview of, Oh, well, we had a lead and we we're getting ready to go. And we don't have a lead. <laughs> so I want to know from you, you know, and I think a lot of people watching this will want to know, uh, you know, it is such a, a, a an amazing uh, feat you accomplished and you went through hell and high water to do it. Um, some, you know, obviously great things along the way, but what, what does that feel like to you that like, boom, August 18th, this is getting pumped out now. Everybody's going to, as a mass, uh, see this. What, how's that feel? Uh, the bittersweet, a, a, a bit, a bit nerve wracking. I, I am, I am happy and proud of, of the cut that we're putting out there. But I don't think any filmmaker, I mean, I, I've heard this quote attributed to multiple different people, but I'm just going to say it was Jean Cocteau. I don't know. Um, the films are never finished. They're abandoned. Um, of course, yeah. of yeah. course, there is always and will always be with every film I've been blessed to be a part of. There's always stuff you'd like to tweak. Oh, wait, just let me just let me just do this just before you watch it. You know, having said that. I think this cut is is a really good representation of, of what of what Kivi and I and Amra and Yozua and Uran, our our producer, 
um, what we what we wanted to do. And and, and frankly, you know, in, in post, I had to I had to have Amra say to me, we need to we need to cut this down because I was you know I was a bit too enamored of, of my characters and um, yeah, the yeah. Scorsese cut. <laughs> There, there, you know, somewhere there's a longer cut of this. Uh, but you know, I, I, I do. I, I, I'm excited for the release. I'm, I'm really excited. I, I for it. I, I hope people enjoy it. And you know, Tom, one of the reasons that I'm, I'm grateful to you for, for having us on, on this oh, podcast sure. is because it's, it's, it's a tough time for, for independent cinema, and, and honestly, has been for, for probably a good decade, decade and a half. And so I'm grateful to, to all the fans out there of independent cinema, anybody, you know, who's, who's willing to take a chance and, and not see, you know, the, there's a lot of great content out there. Um, and so for somebody who's, who's interested in digging a little deeper and seeing something that's a little bit, um, a little bit, not, not as mainstream um, and, and was done because of our lack of resources, just with it, with a ton of passion. Um, and if I if I could segue just for a moment for to the the mutual adulation society, you know one of the many ways that I was so blessed uh, to have Evie is is the, the truth is Tom is uh, you know we we it, it's a SAG movie even though we're in Mongolia it's a SAG film and and, um, right. and I'm I'm Directors Guild so it was also a DGA movie but we we really didn't have the ability to honor all of the, the SAG guidelines, which SAG created to protect um, actors. For example, we couldn't afford to fly Kiwi first class. And, That's a you long know, flight. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, a long, it's a long couple flights. And, and Kiwi <laughs> didn't, didn't even skip a beat. It wasn't even an issue. Uh, you know, I, I reached out and made sure that he got a seat with good leg room. And, you know, um, but it, there was just so much like that that, that – uh, that that reasonably could have bothered um, Kaivi. That 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 you know another actor, and, and, and frankly, it, it wouldn't have been. They wouldn't have been out of line to say, you know what, guys, like, gosh, you know, my my, my deal says I'm supposed to have a first class seat. There was just a lot, of, yeah. and 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 for Kaivi, just not only not only to to roll with that stuff, but never a hint. Of, of, of an attitude, um, always just excited. I mean, yeah. at one point, um, Kiwi and I are talking about, about his schedule and when he wanted to be home and he had family stuff happening. And, and Kiwi, you'll remember that, that I said to you, you know, Kiwi, I, I've made an oath that I, we will get you home by this date. And you said, Drew, let's not worry about that. Let's worry about, about making this picture what it, what it deserves to be. You know? Yeah. Um, that's that's yeah. unbelievable. It, it and to, to 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 Drew's credit, he got me home by my son's first birthday. So <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, first, a, wow, he was a man of his word. So it worked <laughs> out perfectly. We made an awesome piece of art, and I didn't get yeah. scolded by my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Win win right there. Right. right? <laughs> and I I'm for one I I'll put this out there. I'm a, a big advocate right now, uh, and, and a big fan of this film. I I, I put my two cents in. Uh, I really hope there's a sequel. I really, uh, oh, I, I, I'm all for that. And, and everyone and like on this call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and I just want to put this up for everybody. Uh, the Mongolian yeah. Connection. It's available online August 18th, which is uh, Lloyd Bateman's birthday. I found out, by the way. No way. Uh, way. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, awesome. So uh, it comes to iTunes Store, uh, Amazon. Uh, Prime Video and uh, Google Play, and I say, you know, anybody that watches this show regularly, uh, don't walk, run to go see this because it, it's awesome. Super, super. Your time's well spent. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. It was our Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed the show. For more great interviews and content, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Legends and Master Show. Also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Be sure to go to our website, www.legendsandmastershow.com and join our email list for all upcoming shows, events, and articles. See you on the next one.
so real quick to 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 put a button on that is yeah. when uh, uh, Lloyd and Tolga, our, our stunt geniuses, found out that I did jujitsu. They're like, yeah, you want to do some in? And I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah. So we'd be doing a fight, and they'd be like, well, now what would you do right here? I was like, well, I'd throw him off the wall and then armbar him, and that made the movie. <laughs> 